Today we're going to be focusing on voice over IP, which is more often called VoIP. The title of today's webinar is VoIP versus traditional phones. Finding out how your business can improve productivity and deliver exceptional customer service in a work from home environment. Just as important, we're going to explain how you can save a bundle on your voice costs. I hope you'll find this presentation interesting and informative, and we'll have time for lots of questions at the end. But if something does occur to you before then, and you want an immediate answer, please, you'll see there's a Q&A box uh, probably at the bottom of your screen. Just click on that and type your question. Our Vice President Brad is standing by and watching that queue, and he'll let me know if there are any questions, and I'll do my best to answer them as quickly as I can. So thank you again, and let's get started. Okay, so let's have a quick look at some of the topics we're going to cover. First and foremost, I'm going to explain to you what VoIP is and how it works. But I think it's also important to understand what VoIP is not. And I want to mention that there are many different kinds of solutions that are all sold under the name of VoIP. But many of these are quite different and I want to help you understand those differences. We'll also discuss the difference between a VoIP solution and more traditional telephone systems. In the process, we'll talk about why VoIP is a more effective solution than traditional business telephony. Now, here's a brief segue. There's a lot of thinking that once the current pandemic ends, whenever that is, Many businesses and organizations will never go back to the way they operated before. As an example, Shopify made a decision that the bulk of their staff will never return to their offices. Most of their work will be remote. As it turns out, VoIP is the perfect solution for that kind of work from home model. And I'll explain why in a few minutes. And of course, finally, we'll have time for all of your questions. Now, some of you may be wondering why we're presenting this webinar. After all, we're an IT company, right? And as the slide you're looking at says, though, there's no longer any clear distinction between traditional IT and other technologies such as telephony, um, video, and so forth. And so VoIP services and support have become an integral part of the services that we offer to our customers. Now, if you've been on any of our previous webinars, you'll know that I'm not keen on keeping things big secret. So here's a quick plug for the end of our webinar. If you hang on to the end, we'll tell you how you can take advantage of an amazing VoIP solution and save even more money on the installation costs. If you're even considering a VoIP system, you'll definitely want to take advantage of this offer. But even if you already have a VoIP system, I think you'll wanna hear what we have to say, so please stay tuned. Now, some of you have probably been on our previous webinars, but for those of you who haven't, I'd like to start just by telling you a little bit about me. So growing up, I was one of those technology obsessed kids who always wanted to know how things worked. You know, I was one of the guys who were always fixing the projector in the back of the class during high school. Ultimately, when I arrived at university, I decided that it was time to take that interest and turn it into a profession. So I trained as a software engineer at U of T and at York. And while I was still in my final year at York, I started my first business. And by the time I was 30, my partners and I were running a software company with 25 employees. By the time I was 40, we'd grown to 80 employees with offices in Toronto, Montreal, New York, and LA. I sold that business back in 1995 and founded Connectability to concentrate on IT infrastructure. Because at the time, I had this vision that desktop computers and network computing were going to be the foundation of future IT. And in recent years, as we have ridden the technology wave, we've seen the emergence of many new network related technologies, including VoIP. And that's why we're presenting this seminar today. So let's get started, and if you'll forgive me, I, I'd like to start with a little bit of a history lesson. As it happens, I'm a bit of a history buff, and this particular story is really interesting. More important, it will give you some perspective on just how much VoIP has changed the landscape 
in a relatively short period of time. Now, Alexander Graham Bell is generally credited with inventing the telephone in 1876, and actually he built on other people's work, but we won't go into that. Now, initially, when if you wanted a telephone, all you could do is call one other person. They were strictly from one point to another. But that changed very rapidly. By 1877, just one year later, the very first switchboard appeared, looking something like what you see in this picture, which allowed an operator to connect any two callers. And although automated switches, um, a technology that no longer required an operator, were actually invented just a decade later, switchboards, more modern versions, but switchboards like this were still common in the 1970s. Now, if any of you are as old as I am, you might remember at least a couple of the, the devices above. When I first ventured out into the working world in the late 1970s, devices like these, or at least some of them, were still quite common. If you worked in a small office, you probably had a multi-button phone on your desk and you just pressed a button for the line you wanted to answer. Or if you wanted to make an outgoing call, you looked for one that was not lit up. Or if you work for a large company, the switchboard operator would connect a caller to your phone. But all of that began to change radically in the mid 1970s with the invention of the PBX or private branch exchange. And basically what it was, was a complete self-contained phone system in a box that you installed in your office. It allowed you to direct calls to specific employees or even transfer calls between employees. Some of the pioneers in this technology shift were companies like Mitel, AT&T, and Nortel. And again, if you've been around long enough, you might even recognize the Mitel SX200 on the left or the Meridian PBX in the middle. That said, these systems still required an operator. Voicemail and auto attendance were still more than a decade away. But instead of the operator having to use cables to connect one caller to another, they simply pressed a button. That was something of a revolution. And by the late 1980s or early 1990s, we saw the arrival of features like voicemail and auto attendance. And I remember very clearly the first time I encountered them cursing because I could never reach a human being. So at least some things have changed. Okay. Well, now we move into more modern times. And what happened around the turn of the 21st century? Of course, many things happen, but the most important, relevant to today, is the arrival of widely available high-speed internet. The internet itself had been around since the 1970s, but it was only available to uh, educational institutions, the military, and governments. Um, and until the er 1990, early 1990s, that was the case, and it was only available in the early 1990s through very slow dial-up modems. But in the early years of this century, cable and DSL started to make an appearance, bringing huge jumps in speed and capability within the reach of people other than those large corporations or governments. Now, by today's standards, those connections were pretty pokey. But compared to what, where they came from, it was like the jump to light speed. And the arrival of high-speed internet enabled the creation of all kinds of new applications designed to take advantage of that speed. And one of those new technologies was instant messaging. Everyone had an instant messaging app, Yahoo, Microsoft, Facebook, Blackberry, ICQ, and many others. But of course, that was just the beginning. The thinking went that if you could send messages over the internet, why couldn't you use the internet to speak to your friends and colleagues? Well, in 2003, Skype first appeared. Now, Skype wasn't the first application to use the internet for uh, phone calls, but it was easily the most successful. By 2005, they had 50 million subscribers, and by 2010, that number was up to 600 million. And just a year later, in 2011, Skype was sold to Microsoft. So that's today's history lesson. Okay. All right, so, so far so good, let's move on. Well, so much for history. But we're here today to talk about VoIP, 
So let me do my best to explain it. VoIP, as I mentioned earlier, stands for voice over IP. Essentially, a computer takes your voice apart and turns it into little data blocks, which it transmits to the other end where it's turned back into your voice. And if you think about it, it's not really any different from a CD or a DVD, where the mu music or the movie are turned into little blocks of data and then converted back into music or video when you play them. So that begs a question, why would we even want this? Honestly, I could probably spend an hour just explain, answering that question, but let me just make a couple of points. First of all, because VoIP systems are essentially just general purpose computers, they can be configured to do almost anything, such as converting voicemails to text, emailing a voicemail to you, forwarding a call to your cell phone, and many other things that a traditional phone system cannot do. And second, VoIP is much more efficient. With a traditional telephone, a pair of wires goes all the way from your house or your business to the local Bell concentrator box. Only one conversation can be carried over those two wires. But with VoIP, hundreds or even thousands of conversations can be carried on just four pairs of wires, eight wires. So from the perspective of a phone carrier like Bella Rogers, it's way more cost effective. I could go on, but instead I'll just mention a couple of other points. First, all of the phones in a VoIP environment are computers themselves. And that could be uh, a desk phone, but it could just as easily be your computer with a headset connected or even your cell phone, it doesn't matter. And any and all of them can work in a VoIP environment and they can coexist. And finally, it's generally assumed that VoIP means that your calls are transmitted over the internet. And while that is often the case, it's not mandatory. We have several customers whose VoIP systems are connected to regular telephone lines. And I'll talk about that more in a couple of minutes. Now I mentioned this earlier, but I think it's also important to understand what VoIP is not. First and foremost, and I think this is a somewhat common misconception, it's not free. Because you're making calls to phone numbers, which are on the public switched telephone network, sometimes called the PSTN for short, the big phone carriers like Bell & Rogers, they charge you, they charge for the privilege of using those networks. So even if you have an unlimited internet connection, you still have to pay for calls that are made to specific phone numbers, unless they happen to be on the same carrier that you are. That said, VoIP is still generally much less expensive than traditional phone service. Number two, I, I'm sure that many of you have heard horror stories about problems that some companies may have had with their VoIP systems. And those problems were fairly common in the early days of VoIP, but they're far less common today with much more reliable internet connections and with a generally better understanding of how the internet works, most VoIP environments are relatively trouble-free. However, number three, despite that, it's still important to remember that a VoIP so solution has many moving parts. So there's your internet connection, your network switches, your firewall, the phone server, the phones, and of course, the electrical grid that powers all of it. If any of those go down, you could be without phones, potentially for a long period of time, depending, of course, on the nature of the outage. Now, with a conventional analog phone line, you could always plug in a regular phone and still answer calls, even if the power is out in your building. Now, that's not a perfect solution, and there are many ways of working around this issue in a VoIP environment, including emergency failover numbers. And finally, as I mentioned a few moments ago, VoIP is not necessarily making calls over the internet. And again, we'll discuss that momentarily. Well, here's the next and most obvious question. Why would you want a VoIP solution? What does it give you that you won't get from a traditional phone system like, say, a Meridian North Star? In fact, a quality VoIP solution will give you everything that an old fashioned phone system can provide and much, much more. Because a VoIP system is based on a general purpose computer and because it's connected to the internet, it can do things like sending all of your voicemails to your email. 
It supports soft phones, the ability for your cell phone or your desktop computer to act as your business phone as well. And VoIP systems often include features that used to cost a lot more. Things, for example, like ACD, automatic call distribution, so for your customer service department, pardon me, so that uh, you can route calls to the next available customer service representative. In the meantime, you can play music or um, a message about your company. There's a great deal more that a VoIP solution can do and uh, above and beyond an old fashioned proprietary PBX or key system. And we'll see some examples in a few minutes. We'll also be talking about the pros and cons of VoIP solutions. And finally, I should mention the obvious. If you choose the right VoIP solution, you could see a significant reduction in your monthly phone bill. But that said, there are a few circumstances in which VoIP may not be the right solution. For example, if your current phone system is doing everything you need it to, and you have low monthly costs, there may be no benefit to moving to VoIP. Um, or perhaps you're in an environment where you absolutely need the reliability of a traditional phone line and an analog phone. Or you may simply be located in a place where there is very limited, slow or unreliable internet service. But for most businesses, VoIP delivers significant benefits and cost reductions. Well, what you see here are the two most common ways in which VoIP services are offered and sold. Option number one is called hosted VoIP. And in this model, the VoIP provider operates a large scale phone server or typically multiple phone servers that are located in the cloud. And the, actually it's in their data center or data centers, but that's really what the cloud is, a collection of remote data centers. The phones that are on your desk connect to that server in the cloud, which then routes your calls over the internet. And there are many companies today who offer this kind of service. Two of the better known ones are Ring Central and Rogers Unison. The second most common option is an on-premises server where the VoIP server is actually located in your office. Your phones on your desk or your computers or your cell phones connect to that server, which then routes your calls typically over the internet. So examples of this kind of solution would include Asterisk Free PBX, which we're going to talk about in a couple of minutes, 3CX, Cisco UC, and many others. Now, there are two major technical differences between these two approaches. First of all, in one instance, you own the VoIP server, and in the other instance, it's owned by your provider. And secondly, in the first example, the VoIP server is somewhere off-site, while in the second instance, it's on premises. There are also significant differences in the costs, which is something we're going to explore shortly. But in addition to the two solutions you see here, there are a couple of other options that are worth mentioning. Now, I mentioned earlier that it's possible to use a VoIP system with traditional analog telephone lines. In this case, instead of routing your calls over the internet, your VoIP server would route them over regular telephone lines connected that are connected to your VoIP server. Now, why would you want to do this? And honestly, there are really only three reasons that I've, I've come across. The first is when you're on a long-term contract with a company like Bell or Rogers, it simply may not make economic sense to cancel that contract. Those companies have pretty draconian cancellation terms and it could cost you most of an arm and a leg to get out of a contract. So it may not be worth doing that. And instead, you can get a number of the benefits of VoIP by connecting a VoIP server to those analog phone lines using a device called an ATA, which stands for Analog Telephone Adapter. Another reason why you might want to do this is because of the reliability of traditional phone lines. Even if the power goes out in your office, an analog phone line will continue to function as long as you have an available analog phone and a jack that you can plug it into. Of course, if that's your only concern, there are plenty of ways around it that don't involve the expense or complexity of old fashioned phone lines. And we'll discuss that in a moment too. But if you're still locked into a contract with Bella Rogers, 
you can explore many of the benefits of VoIP while still using your existing phone lines. And finally, the third reason why you might want this solution is that you just don't have fast, reliable internet at your location. In that case, this might be the only option. Now, at this point, uh, just before we move on, I, I'd like to introduce a couple of industry uh, pieces of industry jargon, because you're going to see them. So I mentioned earlier, PSTN stands for Public Switched Telephone Network, and it simply refers to the good old-fashioned copper-based telephone network that was built out by Bell Canada here, AT&T in the States, British Telecom in the UK, and so forth. And here's another term that we're going to encounter in a few moments, POTS, P-O-T-S. And that stands for plain old telephone service. And all it means is a regular analog telephone line, like the ones you probably grew up with when you were a child. Now, this final approach is the one that, in my opinion, represents the best of both worlds. And I'll go into why in a few moments. In this approach, you're using the same VoIP PBX that you would be using if you had your server on premises. But instead of locating the server in your office, it's running on a server in the cloud at a secure data center where there are multiple redundant internet connections, 24 hour security, and backup power generators. Wherever you're located, whether that's in your office, a branch office, working from home, on the road, you can connect to that cloud-based PBX. And one of the benefits is that even if the power were to go out in your office, anybody working from home or on the road would still have access. So you have all the benefits of an on-premises solution, flexibility and low cost, combined with the reliability of the hosted VoIP solution. Now, just before I move on and examine the pros and cons of each approach, so let's have a look at the pros and cons. And let's start with the hosted VoIP model. In our experience, this option works best in a very small office of less than five people, which of course begs the question of why we don't recommend it for larger offices. The answer is simple. Solutions like Ring Central and Nextiva all charge based on the number of users. And the typical cost is between 20 and $25 per user. So if you have 10 people in your office, cost could be as high as $250 per month. These services are also not tremendously flexible. Typically, they will offer you a, a handful of phone models that you can choose from, and they'll also dictate which features you're allowed to use. Um, finally, we've seen instances where dialing phone numbers can actually be quite laggy. So you press a button on your phone, and then there's a noticeable pause before you hear the beep. And this is because every phone, whether it's a soft phone or a hard phone, has to connect to the server over the internet. And if either your internet connection or the cloud server is heavily loaded, heavily congested, it can result in noticeable hesitation. Remember that in a hosted VoIP environment, the VoIP provider is usually hosting many companies on the same server. And if that particular server is particularly busy, it could result in lags. Now, I'm not saying this is a bad solution, far from it. These solutions are often provided by very large, very successful VoIP companies. But in our experience, it's not a very cost-effective solution for a larger business with one exception. And that is, if you are running a call center where the vast majority of your people are on the phone all day, every day, because this provides each user with unlimited calling, it may be the most cost-effective solution. Well, let's turn to option number two, an on-premises VoIP server. Now, this solution overcomes the two major issues with the hosted solution. First, the cost is not based on the number of users. You pay a flat, one-time purchase fee for the server, and then you pay monthly for your telephone usage across your entire organization. It's also a very flexible solution. You can choose any VoIP telephone you wish, including wireless phones, conference phones, and video phones. And you can pretty much configure your in-house PBX to do anything you want it to, ranging from translating voice messages to text messages, to performing automatic call distribution for your customer service team. On the other hand, 
Because the VoIP server is located in your office, that means that it is vulnerable to power outages, internet outages, and potentially hardware failures. And finally, there could be an extra charge for ongoing support. But for a larger business, for most larger businesses, we believe that the benefits far outweigh the risks. And now, if you'll forgive me, I'm not going to do pros and cons for the option of using analog phone lines, because we see that as a very special case for only for very specific needs. But at this point, I don't think you'll be surprised to hear that this option, uh, PBX in the cloud, is my favorite. Why is that? Well, the answer is pretty simple. It gives you all of the benefits of an on of an on-premises server with virtually none of the negatives. You have total flexibility and control, as well as protection from common outages. Um, the incremental cost is next to none. It's, it's very minimal, um, but you get dramatically increased reliability. Um, so on the subject of reliability, here's a question we hear a lot. What happens if you have an outage? What happens if your office loses power or your internet connection goes down? Well, the answer is different for the various solutions, but I'll try to review those in as much detail as I can. So let's start at the top. If you just have a regular analog phone plugged into a regular analog bell line, a power outage will actually have no impact. The bell network is self-powered, so unless there's a sustained citywide power outage that goes on for days, you will continue to have service. And I have to qualify this. That's assuming you have a regular phone, analog phone. If you have a cordless phone or something that requires being plugged in, if the power goes out, wait, analog phone or not, it's not going to work. Now, there's a similar situation with an old-fashioned PBX like the Meridian North Star. As long as you've arranged to have an analog jack connected to your primary line, you could just plug in an analog phone and continue to receive calls. Of course, there are restrictions. You can only answer one line, and the phone can only be physically located in one place. So this isn't really a good long-term solution, but it might do for an outage of a few minutes. Now, moving on to the VoIP solutions. If you have a hosted VoIP service in the cloud, those facilities have sophisticated power protection and multiple internet connections, so outages at their end are extremely rare. But if you have an, a power outage, for example, in your office or an internet outage, you can still continue to connect to the cloud phone service by just by using your cell phone. The same thing applies if you have your own PBX hosted in the cloud. While your desk phones won't function if there's a power outage, the server is still up and running and can be accessed using your cell phone, which just leaves us with the on-premises situation. Well, in this case, we recommend setting up, setting up a failover phone number. If the connection between your server and the carrier drops, all calls will simply be routed to the failover number, typically somebody's cell phone. And if you have multiple inbound phone numbers, they're called DIDs, direct inward dials, each of these can be routed to a separate failover number. So in summary, with proper planning, an outage does not have to be a showstopper. So now I've talked about a lot of the benefits of VoIP, but I think it helps a lot to actually hear about some of the creative solutions that we've been able to implement using the technologies that are available to us with VoIP. So I'm going to give you a few examples of some of the things that we've done for our clients over the past few years. One of our clients, for example, required a multi-language auto attendant. So the ability to um, direct customers calling in in English, French, or Spanish with prompts in each language. This was easy peasy. Call forwarding to a cell phone. Um, also very easy and we can even add time conditions so that it will only forward to your cell phone at certain times of day and at other times it will go straight to voicemail call queuing i mentioned this earlier this allows you to set up customer service queues sales queues uh accounting queues whatever you want um we'll basically put the uh, uh caller on hold play a message and direct them to the first available um, operator in each queue. 
uh, sending voicemail to email or voicemail to text. I've mentioned that a few times. Um, that's a common application, but we, we do that all the time. Having multiple phones with the same extension number, including cell phones. So you could have a phone on your desk at the office, a phone on your desk at home, a soft phone at your cottage, and your cell phone, all of which have share the same extension number. So when somebody calls your extension, all of those will ring. You can pick up whichever one is closest. And if those aren't enough examples, there are a few more. So I mentioned multiple extensions uh, or multiple phones with the same extension. You can also have multiple extensions on the same phone or remote extensions. So if you don't want the same extension at home that you have in the office, you can do that. Soft phones, again, I've mentioned this before, but the ability to use your computer or cell phone as an extension. A web interface that allows you to use the web to review and manage your voicemail rather than having to sit there and sort of pass through each one deciding whether or not to keep it or delete it. Custom routing. This, for example, would allow you to uh, route a specific caller to a specific extension automatically. So if you know that Joe always calls for Jill, you can detect Joe's phone number incoming and automatically route it to Jill's extension. And finally, call recording. This allows you the ability to record all calls, calls to specific extensions, only incoming, only outgoing, both, or to turn it on and off at will. And those are just a few examples. So, in summary, I think this image says it all. Comparing an old-fashioned phone line to a VoIP system is like comparing a rusty old knife to a Swiss Army knife. The old-fashioned phone network was designed for one purpose only, to allow two people to speak to each other. VoIP is a much more comprehensive tool for communication and collaboration. Now, I think it's also worthwhile to have a look at costs, since ultimately that will be one of the key factors that any business has to consider in making the move to VoIP. So I've put together some estimated costs that are based on our experience. And please understand that these are only estimates and that the actual numbers may vary depending on who your provider is and what your usage looks like. But that said, these should give you a pretty good idea. And just before I do that, uh, okay, no questions so far. All right, so let's move on to cost. So let's start with a fairly simple 10 user environment. And what we've done here is to compare an old fashioned PBX like a Meridian North Star with a hosted VoIP solution, an on-premises solution, and a PBX in the cloud. And what you'll see here, and in the other examples, frankly, is that a hosted VoIP solution costs roughly the same as one of those old-fashioned analog PBX systems. But of course, you get a great deal more functionality. However, if you move on to the on-premises solution, or for that matter, the PBX in the cloud, there's a significant reduction in cost. I also want to make a note about the per minute call charges that you see in the third column. The solution that we use is calculated in six second increments uh, against a per minute cost. But in our experience, $68 is actually a lot of calling. We have clients who are three times this size who don't use that much calling time in a month. In a few moments, I'll talk about um, some trade-offs between these approaches, but for now, let's press on. So here's an interesting situation. In this particular configuration, 25 users, the hosted VoIP solution actually costs more than the old-fashioned PBX. Of course, again, it has way more features. But as before, the on-premises and PBX in the cloud solutions are roughly half. And I should mention one thing. The old-fashioned POTS solution, plain old telephone service, is calculated based on the number of phone lines that you need. So if you have a very busy environment, you'll need more lines. On the other hand, if your environment doesn't rely on phones very much, you can get by with fewer lines and reduce your costs as a result. But let's be frank, no business wants their customers or potential customers to experience a busy signal. 
that's one of the benefits of VoIP. By the time we get to 50 users, some of the costs begin to level out. And you'll see that the hosted VoIP and the old fashioned POTS lines cost roughly the same. But at the same level, the on-premises from cloud PBX solutions are now substantially less expensive. And all of this begs the question, how do you know which solution to choose? Well, hopefully we can help you achieve a little more clarity. So, a hosted VoIP solution can be very effective in certain circumstances. For example, if you have a really small office with relatively minimal technology skills, it could be a great fit. And at the other extreme, if you're in the call center business and most of your staff are on the phone all day, every day, hosted VoIP makes sense because you're charged a flat rate no matter how much phone time you use. Or perhaps you're operating a 24-hour medical clinic or an emergency service department and you could require technical support at any time. Once again, hosted VoIP would be a good fit here because they provide that. On the other hand, an on-premises or a PBX in the cloud solution is a better fit in larger environments with moderate to average call volumes. And while 30 minutes per employee per day may not seem like a lot, it's actually a lot more than you think. Remember that some employees spend almost no time on the phone while others may use it extensively. As an example, one of our larger VoIP customers has 40 users and averages between 3,000 and 4,000 minutes a month in calling. Now that works out to about four minutes per employee per day. Or to translate that into dollar terms, their average monthly phone bill is somewhere around $30. Now, as I said, the reality is that some users will almost never use their phones, while a few may spend most of the day on calls. But you'll be surprised that it averages out to a much lower figure than you might expect. And we've seen this pattern again and again across many customers. So having said all of that, here are two facts for you to consider. First, VoIP is both the present and the future of telephone communications. Even if you're using an old fashioned analog telephone and so-called regular phone lines, behind the scenes, under the hood, everything is converted to VoIP. Why? Well, because as I mentioned earlier, VoIP infrastructure is much more efficient than old fashioned copper wires. And so major carriers like Bell and Rogers have invested a great deal of time and money in converting the entirety of their internal infrastructure to vo being VoIP based. Here's a second fact. Every single one of our VoIP customers has seen a cost reduction of at least 50%. Some of them have seen reductions of as much as 90%. And it's not just about cost savings. All of the other advanced features that we just talked about come along with those savings. Now, the way that we achieve these results is using the free PBX, asterisk VoIP PBX. Why did we choose this particular product? There are a lot of reasons, as you'll see. One of the most important is that it's the most widely used software PBX solution in the world. And because of its popularity, it's constantly being enhanced and improved. And as a result, it has the broadest, widest feature set of any PBX solution in the marketplace. It requires very limited resources to run, and because it's free software, there are no subscriptions or license fees. Now, I should also address the asterisk at the bottom of the asterisk screen. In addition to the Sorry, so and let me just qualify the word free. Free PBX is totally free. However, it is possible to buy some optional add-on features that you can buy for extra cost. However, I should mention that typically those features cost anywhere from about 50 to $300 for a one-time perpetual license. So if th those add-ons are generally very inexpensive, but more important, few of our clients ever need them because free PBX is already fully featured right out of the box. So 
So what if you already have a VoIP solution? Well, we'd like to suggest that our solution is better. Not only can it save you money, but it will give you every feature that other solutions offer and more. You can keep your existing phones and of course, your existing phone numbers. And in the process, you will likely save 50, at least 50% on your phone bill. But I want to say that we're certainly not here to force anyone into doing anything. If you're happy with your existing solution, if it's doing everything you need, then we recommend you stay with it. But if you're interested in moving ahead, we want to make it easy for you to make the switch. So here comes the offer. As a thank you gift for your time this morning, we're offering the following. For existing managed services customers, we're offering 50% off the installation of our VoIP solution. And even if you're not a managed services customer, we still want to offer you an inducement of 25% reduction on installation. And finally, for any new VoIP customers, we'll give you a free IP phone for every 10 phones you purchase from us. But we can only take on so many new customers at one, any one time. So this offer is only available until next Friday, March 5th. If you want to take advantage of it, please contact us prior to that date and we'll make sure we put you on our calendar. So here's a question. What will an investment in VoIP give you? Well, it will take your communications to the next level, allowing your team to be more efficient and enabling remote and mobile work. At the same time, it will reduce your costs. And the result is a win-win that will give you peace of mind. So if you're ready to move ahead, please email Aberna. Her address is here on the slide. Or just give us a call. Or you can post your request in the chat or the Q&A, and we'll get the ball rolling for you. And do please remember that the deadline for this offer is next Friday, March 5th. So thank you very much everyone for your time this morning. Uh, I hope you found that interesting and useful and now I'd be very happy to answer any questions. Uh, I had, what does VoIP stand for? So it's voice over IP and IP just means uh, internet protocol. So essentially it's the language of the internet. Uh, it translates voice into that language and then translates it back at the other end. Uh, I have another question here. Our network is very stable and we don't experience power or internet outages frequently. Is our best option still to host our own VoIP system in the cloud? Well, basically, um, if you host your server on premises, so here are the trade offs. If you host, host, sorry, if you host a server on premises, you'll have to purchase the server up front. Now, it's not a very expensive appliance. It's about $450. Um, and the cost of hosting it in the cloud um, is about $35 a month. So after the first, in the first year, it's about a wash. After the first year, it's slightly more expensive to continue hosting it in the cloud. But on the other hand, uh, the one thing you never have to worry about is hardware obsolescence. Uh, so, or hardware failures. So there's no likelihood that the server will ever fail. Um, there's no likelihood that it will ever become obsolete or fail to perform because the people who provide the servers in the cloud are constantly upgrading and enhancing. How reliable are soft phones compared to physical desk phones? Um, an excellent question. Uh, and um, it really depends on what kind of a soft phone we're talking about. If it's a soft phone running on your desktop computer, then the answer is very reliable. Uh, obviously, as long as your computer is turned on. If you turn your computer off, it's not reliable at all. On cell phones, uh, it really depends on a lot of factors. Just like answering a regular phone call on your cell phone, if you're in an area with poor reception or poor data connectivity, uh, it's not going to work very well. Um, similarly, if you are moving, for example, from um, Wi from a Wi-Fi zone to a, um, a to a cellular zone, like to your car or whatever, you could potentially experience a drop. 
Um, so we recommend cell phone solutions for people who are constantly mobile, but we do make it clear that there are some, some considerations uh, that you need to be aware of. It says, with Zoom and Teams video conferencing tools currently in place, does it make sense to invest in a new VoIP solution? Uh, and as is the second question, does our, does our solution integrate with Outlook? Okay, again, two great questions. Um, so the answer to the first question is um, a complicated one, and it really depends on how much calling you're doing outside of those video, call, video and conferencing calls. If you are speaking to people who are on the PSTN, on the public switch telephone network, fairly often, then there is value in a VoIP solution. And I think one of the things that we like the best about the solution that we implement is that it's usage based. In other words, um, uh, if, you, if you don't use it, um, your costs are, are minimal. So one of the benefits that with this approach is if you're doing low call volume, you can also expect low monthly bills. Whereas if you're using a more traditional system where you're either paying per extension per month or you're paying for phone lines, you pay for them whether you use them or not. Um, so um, again, it, it, a lot depends on how much um, you're interacting with people on the PSTN, but if you're doing a reasonable amount of that, uh, the solution that we're proposing would give you lower costs, more functionality, um, um, and you know, still deliver most of the benefits of VoIP. Uh, to answer your question about integration with Outlook, there is some integration. Yes, it would really depend on what you're looking for. Next question, if I wanted to move ahead with a VoIP solution, what would the next steps look like? Okay, and, and I'm assuming that your question is really sort of how does the implementation process work? Uh, so basically, um, obviously, any time you switch phone services, you have to be careful because you don't want to lose calls and you don't want to lose callers. Um, and so what we recommend is, uh, or our, our process is that we sit down with you, we collect all of your information. What are your phone numbers? What are your operating hours? What does your auto attendant look like if you have one? What are your, who are your users? What are their extensions? Um, once we've collected a full snapshot of your configuration, we will pre-configure your phone system and test it. Once we're comfortable that it's working, then typically what we do is the following. We call forward your existing phone number or phone numbers to a temporary phone number, and then we request what's called a port. So we, we transport your phone numbers from your old carrier to us. And at some point, that will take effect and then we just cancel the call forwarding. But as a result of doing that, you never actually lose a call. Okay, so with VoIP, what would we be paying for precisely a phone line and service? What would internet or data connectivity be? Or would the internet or data connectivity be a separate service? Uh, generally, if you have a fast enough uh, internet connection, then um, you don't need anything else from your carrier, from your provider, whether that's Bell or Rogers or Telus or whoever it happens to be. If you're on a slow internet service, then we recommend either A, uh, upgrade to something faster if that's available, or B, you may just want to subscribe to a sort of a basic DSL internet package or basic cable internet, whatever happens to be available in your area, just to carry your VoIP calls. Now, these days in our experience, uh, a lot of people, especially if they're in the uh, in in the core of the GTA, a lot of people have very fast internet connections already, or they're available in their areas. And if that's the case, that's really all you need. Here in our office, we're heavy internet users, um, but all of our VoIP calls are carried over the same connection, and we have no issues with um, call quality or reliability. Um, Hopefully I answered that question. Um, and again, okay, we have one phone number and about 15 extensions. How would VoIP work and what would the approximate cost be? Okay, so um, th that's a fairly common situation. Uh, one phone number, we have 
we certainly have customers who have many phone numbers, but we also have lots of customers who have only one. Um, and basically what we tell our customers is uh, the easiest thing is to keep the same extension numbers. We can do that. We can program your system to use any extension number scheme you like. Um, and we and you keep your phone number. Um, so VoIP really works from the perspective of a regular phone call. It works exactly the same way as your existing system. You would have a phone on your desk or a soft phone if you prefer with whatever extension you've been assigned. Incoming calls come into that number. Uh, they're either answered by a live attendant if that's what you prefer or they're answered by your auto attendant which gives them the option of going to a particular extension or checking the company directory. Again, all very familiar, I'm sure, if you've used any business phone system. Um, obviously, there are a lot of extra features. For example, I mentioned call routing. If you know that particular numbers always call for particular users, you can route, route them directly to that extension without them having to go through the auto attendant. So there are a lot of extra things that can be done. It can also process your faxes if you wish. Um, uh, we can set up call queues. I mean, there are many, many things we can do above and beyond that. In terms of the cost, uh, with 15 extensions, you would be looking at um, probably somewhere in, our, in and around 50 to $60 a month in maintenance, uh, plus at a guess, somewhere between 15 and $20 a month um, for calling charges. Um, so, you know, a total of somewhere between uh, 65 and $80 per month total um, and you know if you're for comparison purposes if you are with Bell uh, if you're currently with Bell or Rogers the average charge for a phone line is 30 to 40 dollars a month if you've got four phone lines you're paying somewhere between 120 and 160 dollars so you would be seeing uh, you'd be seeing a price differential of 50 to 60 percent And again, I want to stress that it's not just all about um, cost. I mean, certainly that, that's a nice, strong inducement, but it's also about the things that you can do with the VoIP system, which are far beyond anything that a traditional uh, PBX telephone system could do. Right. So um, just before we wrap, if you have any questions that I haven't answered, I'd be very happy to answer them for you offline. You can just send me an email at tedes at connectability.com and I'll get back to you just as quickly as I can. Um, oh, oh, sorry, here's another question. Can we include cell phones in the VoIP plan? Um, it depends on what you mean by including cell phones. If you mean, can, can they be integrated with your VoIP system? Absolutely. If you mean, can we add calling from your, uh, calling through uh, the cellular network, rather than through the VoIP system. I'm afraid our carrier doesn't have that option, uh, but you can always make calls. Uh, as long as you have data, you can always make calls through the VoIP system. And I, I know that sounds a little confusing, um, but maybe just to clarify, a, uh, if you have a soft phone running on your, uh, on your cell phone, then you can receive calls two different ways. Number one, someone can call your cell phone number. Or number two, someone can call your extension within the within your office, within your VoIP system. If they call your extension or if you call out from the soft phone, that goes through your PBX um, and it's part of your VoIP plan. If you call from your cell phone using your cell phone number, that's part of your cell phone plan. And I hope that was a little clearer than my first attempt. Okay. Um, so if there are no more questions, or for that matter, if you know if there are more extensive questions that you'd like to discuss offline, um, we'll wrap up now. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, this is being recorded. Uh, we will post it to our website uh, within a couple of weeks. And uh, if you click on the link where it says videos, I think, uh, you, will, you will find it there. So I wanna thank you again, everyone who, who attended. Um, and I want to remind you that if you want to take advantage of this offer, just reach out to us by uh, next Friday, March 5th, and we'll get you scheduled. Thank you so much. Have a great rest of your day and happy calling.